Spider Co. Paramilitary 2, model C81. You have clicked on the long version of the Nut and Fancy Tabletop Review. That's right, I'm going to have two separate review videos on this same knife, kind of as an experiment. This is a long version, kind of recreational. I'm going to take my time, we're going to talk about some other blades, we're going to thumb through the catalog. And eventually, I will get around to doing a very thorough review on the Spider Co. Paramilitary 2. Spidey fans, I think you will like this version the most. Maybe not. Maybe you'll hate it. Don't know. As an experiment, I'm also going to do the review in a very short format. Right to the point, the basics, my opinions on the blade. I'm curious to see which video gets the most views. Can't promise I'll ever do this again, by the way. But, you know, if the short version gets all the views, maybe I will. It's so much easier for me to do a short version, a 10-minute review or so on a knife. I can kick those out. But on knives I really love, like the Sp Spidey Paramilitary 2, I like talking about them. We're going to talk about the steel. We're going to talk about improvements made to the, two, the second version, or I should say the Paramilitary 2, and other stuff. Okay, so if you're in a hurry, Upper Right has been showing you the annotation for the short Nut and Fancy Tabletop Review on the C81. Click that if you just want the, you know, bare bones opinions and specifications and I don't know. Okay, here we go. So that's kind of a behind the scenes of how these videos are getting put together. I'm going to also give a quick intro to the short version as well. Getting going. Quiet on the set. This is the official start of the long version of the Nut and Fancy C81 Review. Here we go. That is a rocking catalog. I guess officially called a product guide. I call them catalogs. 2011 version from Spider Co. I do have the 12 version right here. It's much smaller. I guess it pollutes less. That's good. But it's not full size. There's going to be a reason why I like it full size. I'll show you here in a second. What a great catalog this was though. Oh man. Awesome presentation. The photographs were just phenomenal. And it kind of takes us down a trip in memory lane here in the Net and Fancy project, doesn't it? Of the many Spyderco blades that I've reviewed over the years, probably selling the company thousands and thousands of knives. And I'm a huge Spyderco fan. They just do so many things right. Is this where I want to start? Yeah, that'll be a good place. Uh, I don't love every Spyderco blade. I mean, for instance, here we go, the Bushcraft. You'll probably never see a review on that knife here in TMP because it doesn't move me. It doesn't, I don't know, excite me. Price is too high for me. It's a very specific POU that design is made for. We talked about it shot with Mr. Sal Glesser himself, I think in 2011. Uh, so I don't know, just doesn't do it. But this one did. Temperance 2, love that knife. Big old slab of VG10 steel. Sal explained to us why it's cost what it does cost. It's an expensive blade. VG10 in that size is just expensive. I've never reviewed that one. I might someday. I love it. Um, I should say I like it. I don't love it. I like its bigger version, the Fred Perrin, which if you've seen some run and gun videos, I run that a lot on my LBE. It is a go to war blade for me. The larger Fred Perrin, that deep finger groove in the handle, it locks in, awesome jimping top side, VG10 steel, razor sharp, classically shaped clip blade. Here we go. I mean, we could go on all night in the Spyderco catalog. Of, of the designs and the makers that um, knife designers they have that just do such awesome work like this blade and by the way this was a very difficult review for me to do the warrior knife by spider Co. because it has so many players involved in the story and for me to get it all right it took an incredible amount of research and making sure I was getting the details right I still wasn't ultimately super stoked on my review on that knife I was like ah, it just didn't flow the way I wanted that's from a production standpoint. The details are right. My likability scale rocks on that knife because it, the knife rocks. The blackened version was new for 11. Love that knife. Awesome fighting knife. It is an interpretation of the classic warrior design. Previously reviewed. Hate those. You'll never see a review on it. Very lukewarm on this one. Jump knife. I hate the serration Spider Co. does. Always have. I've said that since 08. Nothing's changed. Still hate them. Way too coarse. Kershaw serrations, at least those real shallow ones they do, are awesome. I don't like hawkbill blades, dude. 
generally. Maybe I'll change, but I haven't changed in the last four years, so you're not going to see a review on that. Salt Knife's Rock, though, the H1 Steel, I've had such great experience with. I've reviewed one, and sooner or later I'm going to review more of their classic um, Salt and Pacific blades. Great dive knives, by the way. They, they're kind of like the old school Endura, no steel liners in them. Excuse me, and uh, they're just awesome blades. I just love them. Great all around knives, too. I know. Oh, totally have a review of this coming up. The Whale Rescue Blade. Wait till you see the Zodiac footage. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm not going to review that knife, although I think it's very cool what they put that together for. Bug Knives, totally reviewed that. The Bug, Honeybee, and Grasshopper. High value, awesome. Miniature keychain knives. Excellent. You'll never see a review on that, sorry. Or that. You did see one on that. And by the way, all this has a point. Hang in there. Those are awesome. The UK pen knives. If you get the G10 version, it's my favorite one. I think it's been discontinued. There's the Zytel handled version one. Or FRN, I guess I should say. Those are great knives. I just wish they would lock up more solidly. I think the lock bar on them is just a little bit too weak. Here we go. Navaja reviewed that. Loved it. Persian standby. Cool knives. Nah. Uh, maybe. Nah. At one time I wanted the Super Leaf. I'm kind of not wanting it now. Nope, nope, nope. Reviewed that. The PPT. Liked it. Didn't love it though. There we go. Oh, now it's getting good. Those are our Hall of Famers. The Spider Coast Sages. Awesome. Introduced for, I think, 12 or late 11. I don't even know. The wood version with the stainless steel bolsters. Uh, the Sage, of course, featuring a different locking mechanism from famed knife makers. Um, these three are my faves. Oh, oh my gosh, those are great knives. Great knives. Oh, the super high value line in spider coat. Resilience, persistence, the tenacious, and I go back a ways, the ambitious. Just great, great knives. All right, I got to move along. You'll see that knife in this review. Huh, interesting. And then we're moving along, moving along. Ah, Santa Fonte 3. Hall of Famer, super light. I'm so glad they're still making that knife. And that brings us finally, <laughs> told you, I'm not going to be hurrying on this review, to the topic of this tabletop review, not fancy style, the Spider Co. Paramilitary. Specifically, the Paramilitary 2. Now, having covered so many Spider Co. blades since 2008, I have consistently received so many inquiries and questions and requests to review the paramilitary. Nothing fancy. You reviewed the military a long time ago. Review the paramilitary. Well, here how, here's how it played out for me. The original paramilitary just did not connect to me as a knife user. Now, a lot of you Spidey fans out there loved it from the get-go. You loved everything about it. I understand that. Having ran my military um, in light use, I have to admit, not heavy use, but light use, I didn't like the tip-down carry cool knife, but for that reason, when I handled the original paramilitary, it didn't connect. I mean, I didn't, I didn't say, oh, I'm never going to review that knife. I just, I didn't go out of my way to secure one. Fast forward to actually slow forward, I should say, to 2011. And when I saw the paramilitary 2 came out, I did my research on it and what the improvements were made. Larger blade, finger choils were changed, uh, has a longer handle. All this stuff I'm going to tell you in detail now, it's a different knife for me. Okay, I am definitely interested, and here's the other versions of it too. This is again the 2011 catalog. The C81 is a huge, huge win for Spyderco. All the redesign that they did on it, many of the changes are things that honestly since 2008, I've been advocating in all my... Uh, knife reviews to make it lighter, to make more versatility to how we carry it as a user, blah, blah, blah. Let's get on with the meat and potatoes of this review. I got two versions to show you, and the reason I wanted this full size catalog, by the way, is because of this. Awesome! Full size pictures in a catalog? How hard does that rock? Oh, man. And we got this one too the GCM, is that zero? I guess GCMO BK. My two favorite versions, of course. No spidey serration to dick up the designs. Love these blades. Love them. Let's kick it. Nothing fancy, style, old school, I'm not going to hurry, philosophy of use. I shouldn't say I'm not going to hurry. I mean, we're going to talk about stuff with a purpose. 
I'm not going to spend a ton of time on POU though because I have in other videos the way they have changed the Spider Co Paramilitary 2 I'm talking about Eric and Sal and team is it makes it an awesome tactical folding knife I'm talking a defensive blade if you need to defend your life with it you can and what really makes it excel in that is the amount of blade the amount of cutting performance for the very small weight you're carrying. This version, Paramilitary 2, weighs only 3.8 ounces. Awesome job. 3.8 ounces. For years I've always said I get excited about a knife, at least I'm talking a tactical folder if it's under 4 ounces. There's plenty these days and has been that way for years that I carry they are well over that weight limit. So I don't stick hard and fast with it, to that, but I'll tell you what, if I find a light one like this, it is very integral to my system. Getting back to the tactical philosophy of use, what makes that such uh, so attractive to me is because you'll have it on your person when you need to have it. Again, if you're a soldier, you're carrying a lot of other stuff, extra ammunition, weight, body armor, ammo, all the stuff we have to carry. And heck, cops. I mean, you're, you know, a patrol officer's belt weighing 20 pounds, for crying out loud. Enough about that awesome tactical blade. We'll talk about the blade shape and why I think it really excels in that as well. Everyday carry knife for you fellows out there that can hang with a four inch blade which is the blade size on the paramilitary too. You'll probably love the EDC capabilities of this knife. It's also a collectible. I love how Spyderco will issue something and then it's gone. At least in that coloration. Like these digital camo handles. Imagine this. They're my favorite, right? They'll probably be gone sooner or later. So I think each version makes it collectible and they've come out or will come out more sprint runs is my understanding on the C81. All those would be cool. Featuring different steels, different handle materials. All those are fun. How about this? Finally, as philosophy of use, a food preparation knife. Absolutely. And this will take, I'm going to just jump into steel and blade shape right here. Specifically blade shape. Full flat ground, baby. Oh, man, I love that. FFG. Grays nicely, too. The CPM S30V. We'll talk about that here in a sec. It's got the logo from Eric and Sal on there. I think Eric was pivotal in the redesign of the paramilitary, too. The blade is just excellent. Let's get back to that EDC philosophy of use. Look at the tip. Now, some guys will hate it because it is a delicate tip, and I'm not going to say it isn't. You can break it off if you abuse it, you drop it, you're going to bust the tip off your paramilitary too. The upside to that is you have a pocket surgeon capability like I've said in other knife reviews. It is amazing in its penetration capabilities. It's got great belly. It's just a beautiful knife shape. Okay, and let's talk about the steel. CPM, not regular S30V. Now I've talked about the CPM process and a lot of other reviews, but since this one is so, I don't know, foundational, which I will think it will be to the my reviews on Spider Cut, I'm going to spend a little more time on this steel and why perhaps it merits your attention and then my overall take on if it really is a huge improvement over any other number of steels, OS 8154. If we were to bake a cake and throw the ingredients in there, I'm going to give you kind of a kind of a layman's example on how I perceive CPM S30V and its advantages or any CPM administered steel for that matter. Let's say we threw the eggs in, we threw the oil in, we threw the cake mix in and any other ingredients we needed and yet when we mixed them we only did like two wire whips and then we threw it in the oven and we baked it. How homogenous would the ingredients be and would that be an awesome cake to eat? Now this is a kind of a far-fetched example because that's not what happens to a regular steel when it's smelted or melted into the ingot process. But in some ways it is because you'll have the ingredients of that the steel of that steel, the alloys separate and do weird things. Things that a knife maker and perhaps you as a knife user don't want to happen. And you'll have some unusual carbide distributions and you won't get as fine a grain structure. So CPM rolls along and they create this process where they're actually making micro ingots which feature very homogeneous composition. So the alloys never segregated 
there's a very fine carbide distribution. And the way they do this is they have a molten bath of the mixture of steel they want, and then they spray it. Uh, I don't know if spray is the right word. Uh, let me say they burst the liquid stream into spherical droplets, and it cools instantaneously. And those spheres, <laughs> I hope this isn't boring you guys, but steel guys are going to love this discussion. The spherical droplets will be very homogeneous as far as the cake mix goes. So they, ne they never were given the opportunity to have those unusual carbide formations form or the segregation to occur. And so what you have is S30V the way the designers want it. The steel maker wants it. And then with that, they'll go through a process making compacts are called through a hot isostatically pressed temperatures in steel containers. It basically forms ingots. And what do you get out of that? You get uniform di distribution of the fine carbides. You get no alloy segregation. And it's very fine grained. Welcome to CPM S30V. Or any CPM steel for that matter. And they'll tell you it has better wear resistance, has better toughness, it has better grindability and polishability. And those last usually for the user they won't care about for the maker they will because for a maker to grind these blades they have to have machines that do it and machines wear out when machines wear out it costs money to replace the grinding heads or the grinding or cutting wheels and they want to keep their costs down it is a selling point the whole process and the whole thing I just described in detail is a selling point and people want to sell knives they want to make them cool and attractive to us the end users but I think specifically speaking, from what I have seen so far, and I'm always subject to change, maybe not that big of a difference. The paramilitary too features that steel. I'll tell you this, if for the same price, I'll take this one hands down. Okay, hands down. I mean, if it's a 5%, a 10%, a 20% increase in uh, the fine grain structure of the steel, I'm game. Okay, so there you go. Long discussion on the steel. Welcome to Knife Television and Fancy Style. Boom! This one features DLC, diamond-like carbon. Pretty tough. I didn't do any hard cutting with it. Sorry, I'm not going to thrash it. Not going to do it. I like that from some other blades that I've tested with DLC coating on them. Just excellent. Uh, good rust resistance. The CPM S30 uh, V steel that I've talked about so much. It is a great steel. And I'll tell you, these come wicked sharp out of box. Both of these feature just phenomenal edges. Let's look at the grinds real quick. Sometimes the manufacturers hurry on this and they screw it up. Satin finish version, looking at the relief edge, just about perfection if you were to ask me. Here's the other side, no asymmetrical qualities that I can really see. Maybe some slight ones, but that's okay. And the black version's no different. Just a beautiful blade, man. Beautiful blade, moving on. What, finally? 20 minutes into it, finally moving on. Speed, outstanding. One of the upgrades, I guess I can get rid of this catalog now. One of the upgrades on this paramilitary two is a new bushing system. And I think this really is a manufacturer advantage because it self-adjusts. It doesn't require any hand fitting. It extends slightly, my understanding, hope I'm not wrong on this, the bushing inside the blade pivot extends slightly past the width of the blade. And then it locks, as you can see, with two screws on each side. Okay, and if we look inside, we can probably see some phosphor bronze bushings in there. Let me tell you this. It is phenomenal. Whatever it is, the new bushing system, whatever, it is just wicked slick and fast. Okay, watch this. I'm gonna, this is the one I've used mostly and I've carried EDC style for months now. And if I release the compression lock, you can see it drops. That is like a complete lack of friction and that's a good thing. Here's the one that has not been used. This is fresh out of box pretty much. Okay, so it's gonna wear just like that. The speed is outstanding. There's all kinds of ways that you can deploy this knife. I usually go conventional because conventionally you don't cut yourself. You don't jack it up and more importantly you do it that way or can do it that way with every other knife you use. If you have a you know a different way of deploying your paramilitary too, maybe you want to pop your compression lock and just deploy it that way. That works too but oh what do you know maybe it doesn't work so well because I didn't have it lock all the way you'd have to practice it. But for those of us who have all kinds of different knives, 
I kind of stick to one deployment method, training issue. You can also shake it out from the handle. I'll do it off camera. Man, that's a nice snap. Rocks that way. It just comes out wicked fast. The speed is just, it, it's perfection. It couldn't be any better. 14 millimeter deployment hole, by the way. And I think that's larger than the original paramilitary. Jumping ahead to ergonomics, look at the gimping. Perfection, dudes. That's all I can say. It's perfection. Big old thumb ramp on that blade. You got a forward finger choil with outstanding jimping on that side, too. Perfection. You can lock this blade in so tight. Ultimate control, paramilitary. Yes, it's everything you guys have said it is. I am totally, totally on board. Uh, love it, love it, love it. The speed I'm talking about. Lock up and strength. Okay, compression lock. It's a proprietary lock with Spyderco. And honestly, I don't have a massive amount of experience with it. But first off, look at that huge stop pin in there. That, that pretty much rocks, don't you think? But watch how the compression lock will engage. So we're going to rotate the blade tang back to the stop pin and there's a little shelf on the bottom of the tang and the compression lock will go into that detent and lock it. So it's pinched between that massive stop pin and the compression lock. And one thing Spyderco touts, and I don't think they're often doing this, is the safety of it because you don't have to put your finger like we do with a standard liner lock in the way of the blade to close it. In fact, just like I've been showing and demonstrating, you can close it just like that. I think the compression lock, from what I know about it now, is excellent. Is it as good as some other com competing locks like the Triad from Colt Steel? I don't know. And I'm not ever going to thump on these knives hard enough to know. Not a more expensive blade like that. That's just not something I'm in, I, I want to do. Uh, the lockup. Perfection. Both of these knives and every other paramilitary two I've, I've looked at. No up and down, no side to side plate. If there is a little bit of side to side, like I said a bazillion times, you might be able to dial it out. Let's look at blade centering before I forget. Oh, look at that. Does it come any better? That might be an outgrowth, by the way, of that new bushing system on the paramilitary too. I think some manufacturers and some designs really have a hard time getting blade centering right. Handle retention. Perfect. Now I'm going to try to shake this out on camera. There we go. The detent and the retention is just phenomenal. One thing you're going to have to get used to of that compression lock is it is different. So several times with the paramilitary too, I'm coming down here because of my habit pattern. I'm like, oh yeah, compression lock, it's top side. And I do note when I deploy it conventionally fast, I'll get a little pop on my index finger. I snap my blades out pretty hard though. Uh, I think the strength on that lock from what I know, awesome. Let's talk about handle and handle material. Some changes were made on this version over the paramilitary. And they're all for the good. For one, and this is another reason I wasn't so much digging, I don't know, the original paramilitary, is they got rid of this a big bulbous hump back here on the handle. And if I'm correct, they lengthened the handle on the paramilitary too. For me, I wear a large glove size. It makes it a much more comfortable knife. Much more comfortable. I don't have a bump. I have a slight one, but I can deal with that. And I generally have enough real estate where I'm comfortable with a knife. Forward grip, if I come into reverse grip, which honestly I rarely, rarely do. Unless that watermelon is seriously giving me some attitude. <laughs> Just kidding. Then yeah, I'll do it. Uh, they also upgraded to a different screw. And I think earlier paramilitary twos had a different screw in the handle. These are flat, harder gripping, pretty much flush mounted screws now for that G10 material. Look at the milling of that liner. Let's see if I can see it. What light do I have with me? Oh yeah, four sevens, AA squared. Okay, this is another reason why the weight is so phenomenal. You can see it in there. Huge milled out section of the steel liners. They did about as much as they could get away with. And I don't know if you're seeing it here. There's another one right back here. So not drilled, but milled as much metal taken out as possible. Again, this is something I've been harping on for years in my knife reviews. Manufacturers, please lighten your knife up. Huh, we see it in the paramilitary too. That, along with the sharp jimping, so many other things. I mean, it's just phenomenal. Look at the G10 on this. How cool that looks. The digi cam, is that just sick? 
And I would say this is approaching high traction G10. High traction. Really high traction will be found in several of the cold steel models. Large lanyard hole. That's an improvement with the paramilitary too. So you can weave through your 550 cord without hollowing it out and all that stuff. Now the clip is positionable to all four corners. Finally. And then they pushed it out further towards the handle. Huh, so it would carry deeper. Another thing I've been harping on in my knife reviews here in TMP forever. Um, if you really don't like it, don't fret. You still will have this much knife sticking out of your old pocket. I wish it would actually carry a little bit deeper. And this is a great place to roll in an also awesome Spyderco product, the Manix 2. 10 out of 10, baby. This knife right here, the translucent blue Spyderco Manix 2. Oh my gosh, another Eric knife, and man is it a home run. Beautiful knife, and I'm showing it to you now for one reason. This is my favorite clip that Spyderco makes. I'm going official with it. The high tension wire clip, and this one carries up deeper in the pocket than the paramilitary too. That's my only point, and I might as well talk about now the clip. It's a standard hourglass affair. It attaches with three screws. It's solid, it's durable, it wears well. This one is polished in this version. I think in the black and satin version, it's going to be polished as well. I'm talking this one right here. There you go. There's your picture. Decent. I, I just like the, the wire clips are my favorite ones that they do right now. Um, so big differences between this and the regular paramilitary. Uh, the rounded are the ergonomics on the handle. By the way, this is a lanyard tied to my specifications. Look in the upper right and you'll see where to get that. A lot of guys ask me and I forget to mention it. I don't like the big frilly ones with clown frills poking out. Hate it. This one rocks, so like the colors too. It'll blend with most of your tactical stuff. How about durability? I think the main thing you're going to have to watch out about is the delicate tip. If you're good with that and you take care of this knife, it, the durability should be phenomenal. I don't really see any issues at all with it. Uh, rust resistance, I think it's a great outdoors blade too. If you want to haul this thing backpacking, it'd be great. I would actually opt for an Endura 4 or a Delica 4 as you've seen me do in my backpacking adventures. Those are still Hall of Famers. They're lightweight, easy to carry on the value. Let me see. This one, I want to say, I don't have it written down. I think it runs around 110 or so. A paramilitary 2 and it's worth every dime. How's that for value? Totally worth it. Um, CPMS 30V Steel, all the improvements we're talking about, the great uh, jimping, it's just perfect. There's a lot of other great competitive options, and Spider Coat is not the only game in town. There's so many other knives I love with equal enthusiasm. I just reviewed a while back the Buck Vantage Force Pro. It's 4.8 ounces. It features, I think, traditional S30V steel, which in my cutting test performed very well, $78. So it's going to be even cheaper than this knife. Not quite as light. Very cool looking, though, don't you think? That aluminum scale. Oh, just beautiful. That's Vantage Force Pro. And then this one I just showed you. Competitive option from the same company. Which one would you prefer between the two, nothing fancy? That's a hard question. And I'm always kind of flexing in my likes and my dislikes. I will say I've been carrying the Manix 2 Translucent for the last two weeks solid, and I have not wanted to take it out of my pocket. Now, if we were to back up a month or two, I was carrying this the same way. I was like, I don't want to take that out. I love it. And it's so light, I don't even know I have it on me. Another great knife. And I'm going to go back in the... You guys are going to love this. I'm going to go back in the time capsule and show you another option. This is in 154 CM steel. At the time, I paid $240 for it. It's four ounces. Say hello to the manual action Microtech Amphibian and Desert Camo. Eat your heart out. Manufactured 10-2003. Why are you showing that one? Just because it's fun and it's the same weight. So these knives essentially weigh the same and it's fun to compare them, don't you think? Just size wise. You'd think the Amphibian would be a bigger knife, it really isn't, but man is it just a rocking blade. All kinds of cool. And actually the paramilitary has that too. Has two kinds of cool. It's very functional, it's very attractive, and to me collectible. It gives me a lot of enjoyment fondling it, looking at it, playing with it. Talking about the knife. Yeah, it's pretty much rocking. How about these knives? Oh man, I reviewed these kind of. The old school Lone Wolf. 
now being produced by Benchmade. They bought Lone Wolf, and I think they call it the 4003 Trask at 4.4 ounces. And now it's being produced in N680 steel. I think these were in, yeah, CPMS 30V, and this is why I want to show them. So the ex exact same steel of this, and the pricing on this was less than this. I think a, this one at the time ran around 80 bucks. A Bono wood scales, just a gorgeous knife. You're forced with tip down carry though. Jimpy not as good. Not full flat ground. Bead blasted. Great knife though. Here's the G10 version of that Lone Wolf or the Trask. I don't know if the Trask is being produced in G10 yet. I don't think so. These old school Lone Wolves are totally collectible in my mind. Collectible to me. They're just cool. Great knife. Same steel. Another option. And then finally I'm going to end with another Microtech. Don't know why. 2.2 ounces Microtech Mini Socom Elite Urban Camo. Sick! February 2004. Oh my gosh, is this a cool freaking knife. Frame lock. Just beautiful. Lighter than the paramilitary too. No, you can't get it. It's not a realistic option, but it's size-wise just interesting. Very few knives have ever had that perfect handle ratio as the mini SOCOM elites. I know they're making SOCOM elites or something like that, but they're expensive. Back to the paramilitary too. I'm going to end with cool factor. Well, actually, let's look at the handle to blade ratio. It is not one-to-one -one or even near it in my estimation. I like that the handle's bigger. If I have gloved hands, that 14 millimeter deployment hole, the longer handle, now that Eric got rid of the bump back there, way awesome. It's just a cool, cool knife. Hall of Famer, man. It is a Hall of Famer. And they've been selling like crazy. And I've been trying to get this black one for the review. I'm talking, I buy them just like you guys do. At the places I send you guys to, look in the upper right, that's where you go to buy these, these knives for the best prices. That's where I go. <laughs> that's where TMP goes, man. You know? And I've been trying to get this black one forever because I, I was going to do a review and I was like, ah, no. I want to do I want to do better. I want something that will stand the test of time, showing you different versions, not just in picture form, though. There's really nothing I don't like about the SOG, SOG, sorry, the Spyderco Paramilitary 2. Awesome milled out liners, has a bigger handle, countersunk screws, bigger lanyard hole. Oh, there is one other thing I want to show you. Man, I'm so glad I remember this. Look at that smooth transition from the tang when it's being carried. If you do want to carry tip down, I don't know if you remember, but the original paramilitary had that sharp transition here that would smack your hand. That's gone. Four-way positionable clip, hourglass style. I do wish it had a high-tension wire clip on it. I love those better. And the kind that are looped over. Not this one, but they're looped over and carry even di deeper. It's just fast, locks up solidly proprietary compression locking mechanism Spyderco Paramilitary 2 10 out of 10 nothing fancy